OK, let's try and solve some command injection challenges on our OWASP virtual machine. So what you want to do is make sure everything is started, verb suit is started, even though we're not going to use it, but we need it just in case. Maybe we are going to need it. Maybe we are not going to need it. We don't really know that. Also, besides verb suit, open your OWASP virtual machine. And once you have all that ready, we want to navigate to the OWASP Motil Day 2. Now, here on OWASP 2013, we're going to see under the injection, command injection, right here. And we can go with any one of them. So let's go with DNS lookup. It will open this simple page. So it says, who would you like to do a DNS lookup on? Enter IP or hostname. Let's say, for example, we type in google.com. And just so we can see everything better, I'm going to zoom this in. Let's say we type www.google.com and click on lookup DNS. And this is the output that we get. And straight away, just from the output, we should be able to notice that this output looks quite similar for us. It almost looks the same as the output from the NS lookup command. And as we already know from our Linux knowledge, NS lookup command is used inside of the terminal. So if I typed www.google.com to the NS lookup, we would pretty much get almost the same response. So maybe this application is using its system to execute this command and give us the result back. And whenever this happens, we already know there might be a possible command injection. So let's type www.google.com, semicolon, space, and then let's type who am I. Click on lookup DNS. And this is the output that we get. We have a command injection. As we can see down here, it executed our who am I command. We can do the same thing with ls or any other command that we can run in terminal, and it should also run. As we can see right here, our ls command gave the output of all the files in this current working directory. So this was rather easy. We found the command injection. But let's take it a step further. Let's try to establish a reverse shell with the target system with the help of a command injection. And if we take a look at these outputs or these files that we got with our ls command, it seems that the server is running PHP, which is most common, to be honest. So most likely servers will be running PHP. And maybe we can do something like a PHP reverse shell. Now, even though we're not PHP coders, these type of one line reverse shells are very easy to find online. And you just need to Google PHP one line reverse shell or bash one line reverse shell, and it will give you a single command that can be used to establish a reverse shell connection with our Cal Linux machine. So I got one of those commands right here. It's written right here in my nano editor. And all this command is doing is it's running PHP code where it creates a socket object and socket object in programming language is something used to establish a network connection. In the brackets between the double quotes, we have our Kali Linux IP address. So this is my Kali Linux IP address. And here is the port that we want it to connect to. The second part of the command is what we want it to execute once it connects. And this entire part simply tells execute the bash shell and make it run as much commands as we want. So this is the entire thing that this command does. It connects to our Kalinux IP on the specified port and it executes the bash shell for us so we can execute the commands. But in order for the target machine, which in our case is OWASP BWA, to be able to connect to our Kalinux machine, we must listen on an open port for the incoming connections. And we can do that easily by opening terminal and typing NC, which is netcat, dash LVP, and then the port that we want to listen. This dash LVP simply stands for listen on any interface that Kali Linux has. So we're not specifying the exact interface, we're pretty much telling accept the connection on whichever interface that you get the connection from. 
So it's nc-lvp and then space and here we need a port. And if we go back to our command, let me find it. In this command we specify the port 1234, so we must use the same port inside of our netcat command. So we will type nc-lvp and then 1234. And this is pretty much all we have to do. It says listening on any interface on port 1234. Now we want to copy this command and make sure that you get all of these single quotes and double quotes right because otherwise it will not work. And then we want to execute it right here. So let's go down and type www.google.com semicolon and now let's paste the entire command here. Click on lookup DNS and the first thing that you will notice is that it's loading the page. It's not outputting anything for us. It's just continuously loading. And if we go back to our netcat window, here it is. We got our reverse shell opened and we're on that machine currently as www-data user. Here we can execute all the commands without having to go to the web page. We can just type who am I, we can type I've config, we can type ls, we can type pwd to check current working directory right here. And we can type anything that we can run from a normal terminal. We can even try to, for example, execute one of these PHP files if we want to. So this is really good because now we have a reverse shell established on the target machine and we can do anything that we want, including deleting files, creating files, navigating through the system, downloading files, uploading files, and all of that. So that's really cool. Even though you can do all of that with just typing in the commands right here, it's much easier once you have a reverse shell established where you can just type in the command in the command line. Now that we did that, we covered a little bit of an advanced example of exploiting command injection. And in the next video, we're going to take a look at one last example of command injection, which will be on our DVWA, on our OWASP virtual machine. See you in the next video.